welcome to my channel in this video you will learn basics of stiffness matrix method in previous video we have learned about concept of matrix method and we have seen that there are two types of matrix methods based on the quantities which are chosen as primary unknowns that is stiffness matrix method and flexibility matrix method if in case you haven't watched my basic video on matrix method then before watching this video i will suggest you to first watch my video which explains concepts of matrix method we have seen that there are two approaches in stiffness matrix method one is called as system approach and second is member approach so in this video you will learn how to develop structure stiffness matrix using system approach to understand stiffness matrix method first of all we must know what is meant by stiffness of a member so here we are studying application of stiffness matrix method for continuous beam and portal frame therefore we will study flexural stiffness so we know that what is flexural stiffness when a member of uniform section is subjected to a moment at one end only then moment required to rotate that end through unit angle that is unit slope is called as stiffness for example consider this beam here what is this moment required to make this slope here that is this theta equal to 1 is called as flexural stiffness so what is flexural stiffness moment required to make theta equal to 1 so this we are going to use in developing the stiffness matrix we know that if far end is fixed then this moment required to make this slope equal to 1 is equal to 4 ei by l so if this is 4 ei by l to keep this slope equal to 0 at other end some moment is automatically generated at other end so here at near end the moment required to make this theta equal to 1 is 4 ei by l and at far end the moment is half of this moment which is equal to 2 ei by l so this is called as stiffness now we will see what is meaning of stiffness coefficient each element of stiffness matrix is called as stiffness coefficient and the stiffness coefficient sij it is denoted by sij is defined as the force developed at coordinate i due to unit displacement at coordinate j so for example if it is s12 then it is the force developed at 1 due to unit displacement at 2 similarly if it is s31 then it is force developed at coordinate 3 due to unit displacement at coordinate j so this stiffness matrix look like this s11 means first row first column first row second column s21 means second row first column and s22 is second row second column so our aim is to calculate these coefficients so in this video we are going to understand how to develop this stiffness matrix now let us consider a simple example suppose this is a part of a beam and if it, these are two coordinates these are rotational coordinates 1 and 2 then if we make this slope equal to 1 theta equal to 1 what is the moment required to make this one it is 4 ei by l now let us consider length is equal to 3 meter and ei is constant then here 4 ei by 3 is the stiffness coefficient at this end now how we can designate this stiffness coefficient it is s where it is developed at 2 and where unit displacement is applied it is at 
so this is nothing but s22 now if we apply 4 ei by l here automatically 2 ei by l is developed at other end to make this slope equal to 0 so what is this this is the force developed at 1 due to unit displacement at 2 so this is s12 so we have seen that if we apply unit rotation at 2 then this is called as s22 what is s22 means first digit is where the where the force is developed and second digit is where the unit displacement is applied so here force developed at 2 due to unit displacement in the direction of 2 is called as s22 which is 4 ei by 3 similarly here this is s12 what is 12 means one is force developed at 1 due to unit displacement at 2 so we get two coefficients that is s12 and s22 by applying unit moment sorry unit rotation at 2 so this is the meaning of stiffness coefficient now suppose any problem is given to you so first of all we will understand what are the different steps involved in development of stiffness matrix so here for development of stiffness matrix first of all we have to assign coordinate numbers to the unknown displacements so if theta is are unknown then coordinates are rotational coordinate then second step is impose restraint in all coordinate direction so that means consider fixity at all the coordinates then next step is to generate first column of stiffness matrix how we generate first column of stiffness matrix that we allow unit displacement at coordinate 1 and restraint in the restraint structure and determine the forces developed in each of the coordinate direction this we will understand with the help of numerical example we develop stiffness matrix column by column so after developing first column of stiffness matrix to generate second column of stiffness matrix we allow unit displacement at coordinate 2 in restraint structure and determine the forces developed in each of the coordinate directions in similar way generate all the columns of stiffness matrix the size of stiffness matrix is n by n where n is number of unknown displacements in the structure or it is also equal to number of coordinates so these are the general steps to develop a stiffness matrix now we will understand these steps with the help of one numerical example okay let us generate a stiffness matrix for the beam with reference to coordinates shown in the figure now let us consider this beam with two simple supports at a and b and fixed support at c now remember that stiffness matrix doesn't depend on the loads on the beam so it depends on only these support conditions so here how many unknowns are there in this structure there are two unknowns that is theta a and theta b so there are two coordinates this is coordinate 1 and this is coordinate 2 now let us see how to develop the stiffness matrix for this case so this is the given system with two simple support and one fixed support so here the unknowns are theta a and theta b and therefore we have selected two coordinates that is coordinate 1 and coordinate 2 so what is the first step first step is to restrain the beam at a and b so here there is simple support we have to consider fixed support so make it fixed at a and b consider fixity at support a and b so this is the first step 
In stiffness matrix method, we develop the matrix column by column. That means first we will develop this column and then we will develop this column. So to develop first column, to generate first column of stiffness matrix, we allow unit displacement at one. Means in the direction of one, we will provide or we will apply unit displacement. So first of all, we have to consider these ends as fixed support at A and B. This is first step. And in second step, we allow unit rotation in the direction of one. So when we apply unit rotation in the direction of one, two moments are developed. One is at A and second is at B. So moment developed at one due to rotation of one is called as S11, which is equal to four EI by L. Moment developed at two due to unit displacement at one is called as S21. And this is half of this, which is two EI by L. So this is how we develop first column of stiffness matrix. So here we apply unit rotation at one for first column, apply unit rotation at one, then moment developed at one due to unit rotation at one is S11. Moment developed at two, first letter indicate where moment developed and second letter indicate where the unit displacement applied to the structure. So let us see how we calculate S11 and S21. So this is the given problem. We want to develop stiffness matrix for this. So we have applied unit rotation at one. Before that, we have made these supports as fixed support. So first step is make the supports all the coordinates at all the coordinates provide fixed support and then apply unit rotation in the direction of one to form the first column. So S11, which is force at one due to unit displacement at one is equal to four EI by L. So this is four EI by L where L is three meter. So therefore we get four EI by three. Similarly, this is S21 that is force at two due to unit displacement at one. So this is equal to two EI by L which is two EI by three. So this is how to develop first column of stiffness matrix. Now let us see how to generate second column of stiffness matrix. That means how to calculate stiffness coefficient S12 and S22. To generate second column of stiffness matrix, allow unit displacement at coordinate two. So this is our coordinate system. First of all, we have to make it fixed at one and two, and then we have to rotate joint B like this in the direction of coordinate. So when we apply the rotation in the direction of coordinate, the beam will deflect something like this. So while drawing this deflected shape, you have to draw the line, which is, tan this is tangent to the curve. So we have to draw a smooth curve starting from B, and then here we have to make slope equal to zero. Similarly, here on this side, touching to this line, this is a tangent to the curve. Therefore, touching to this line, start the curve, and then here make slope zero. So this is how we apply unit rotation at coordinate two. So when we apply unit rotation at coordinate two, let us see what are the forces developed at one and at two. To develop second column of stiffness matrix, when we apply unit rotation at in the direction of second coordinate, the beam will deflect something like this. Now let us first consider the left part of the beam. When we consider left part of the beam, this length is three meter and this length is four meter. So here at unit rotation, the force develop is four EI by L and at other end, it is two EI by L, where L is three meter. Now consider right part. At right part, 
here where we have applied the unit rotation the force develop is 4 ei by l now in this case length is 4 meter so it is 4 ei by 4 and 2 ei by 4 so this is how the beam will look like when we generate the second column of stiffness matrix second column means s12 and s22 so s12 means force developed at 1 1 is here force developed at 1 due to unit displacement at 2 due to unit displacement at 2 what is the force developed at 1 it is 2 ei by l which is 2 ei by 3 so here s12 will be 2 ei by 3 now second we coefficient is s22 s22 means force developed at 2 due to unit displacement at 2 this is our point 2 or coordinate 2 so in the direction of coordinate what are the forces developed at 2 it is 4 ei by l of this part and 4 ei by l of this part so it is addition of 4 ei by 3 plus 4 ei by 4 so s22 is equal to 4 ei by 3 plus 4 ei by 4 which is equal to 7 ei by 3 this is how we get second column of stiffness matrix so we have calculated all the four stiffness coefficients s11 s12 s21 and s22 so we can write this in matrix form you can observe here ei by 3 is common in all the coefficients so we can take ei by 3 as constant outside the bracket and here we can write 4 2 2 and 7 so this is how to develop the stiffness matrix in the direction of given coordinate now we will see what are the different properties of stiffness matrix so first property is stiffness matrix is always a square matrix of order n by n where n is degree of kinematic indeterminacy or the number of coordinates for the problem second is it is always a symmetrical matrix that is sij is equal to sji that means if it is s13 then it is equal to s31 that is the meaning next is the stiffness coefficient sij is the force developed at i due to unit displacement at j now next property is if the force developed and displacement direction is same then it is taken as positive otherwise it is taken negative next is the diagonal stiffness coefficients are always positive so in stiffness matrix if you draw a diagonal then this diagonal stiffness coefficients are always positive and other stiffness coefficients may be positive or negative this we will understand while solving various problems in next video then next properties for stable equilibrium structure the stiffness matrix is non singular so what is the meaning of singular matrix a matrix is said to be singular if its determinant is zero so for stable equilibrium structure the stiffness matrix is always a non singular so these are some of the important properties of stiffness matrix so in this video we have studied how to develop the stiffness matrix and what are the different properties of stiffness matrix in next video you will learn how to develop a stiffness matrix for various types of continuous beam and portal frame so stay connected thank you for watching this video